Hello and welcome back to the next episode of Swift UI Elements. Today we will talk about buttons. So let's start. Most of the time when you need an action from the user, the user actually taps a button. So um, how does the button work? So a button has different initializers. So um, you can have configuration, a title, and an action, and you can define a role. So let's start with, a, with the easiest one, a title and an action. So uh, code completion, let's do it. So the first closure would be the action, and then we add a label. The label itself uh, is a closure which returns another view. So here you are free. Normally you would use a text, or as you have seen in the video before, you, you can use a label. So let's just do that. We add a label with a text, my button, and as in system image, I will use the star. So, and um, as you can see, by button, it should be my button. So, um, and as you can see in the preview, we get a label completely blue, and I can tap it, and you get a, a nice animation for a button. So now we haven't added an action, so the button doesn't do anything, but you get the, the idea of it. That's the standard button. It's a blue one, no background. Here we can add different uh, styles, also like the uh, label before. So let's have a look what options do we have here. So we have the automatic, the bordered, bordered prominent, borderless and plain. So let's start with the bordered one. And as you can see, um, it gets a nice light gray border or background, not a border. Um, and you can tap it, you get also the animation. Then we have bordered prominent. So this is used if you have more than one button and one should be prominent than the other one, then you would use border prominent on one of the buttons. Then you can see the background gets a deep blue and the text turns into white. And the last one we have is the borderless. Then you get mostly the standard one. And it was not the last. No, now comes the last with the plain one. Then you don't get any color on it, but you get the, you can touch it. So you can tap it. So that's the button style. So let's remove that so we get a standard one. What we now also have, as I said before, we can define different roles of a button. So what are roles? Roles are basically the intention, what action would happen when you tap the button. So you can have uh, basically no role, that's the standard one. Then you can have destructive or cancel. Destructive is uh, used when the action you perform is a destructive action. So basically if you delete an element and stuff like that, so when I use destructive role, then you can see the text turns into a red one. And if I re-add the button style, like bordered prominent, you can see it now gets a red background and not the blue anymore. So for destructive actions, you would use the role destructive. In addition to that, you can also say, okay, uh, the button border shape, I also want another one here. So if you have also predefined options, you can use capsule, circle, rounded rectangle. So the rounded rectangle one is the one you see as standard one. But I can also say, okay, I want more a capsule style. And then you see uh, the background changes to a capsule. You can also use circle, but a circle a result is, um, yeah, okay. Because I used a label, um, SwiftUI now knows I have a circle background, so it all only uses the image of the label. So you get a star with a red, red background. If I just comment this out and add a normal standard text, this is my button. You can see the result is not that great. Uh, you can see the text. Let's remove the roll so we get the come back to the standard button and let's remove the style. Now you get a normal button and when you re-add the circle, 
then you can see the text gets cut off. So that's why I set primary user label. Then you have, don't have to deal with it. And it has always a good uh, UI representation. Yeah, and that's the basic functions of a button. Um, you can also customize the button. So the label doesn't have to be a label. You can also use a custom view you have. So it depends on your use case and what you want to do. But with an element, when you want the tap action with the flickering here, when you tap or when you hold, tap and hold, then you should use a label. Yeah, that's it for today. I hope you liked it. See you next time. Bye-bye.